What's that sort of shiny object off in, in the distance there over a sea of mirrors? That's the first thing you see, the, the towers from over the mountains, and as you get a little closer, you begin to see a sense of the scale of uh, how it's designed. Three giant towers and 300,000 mirrors have gone up in California's Mojave Desert, one hour south of Las Vegas. The $2.2 billion Ivanpah Solar Project is the largest of its kind in the world. It will be able to produce as much electricity as a medium-sized natural gas plant, but without the carbon emissions. We selected the Ivanpah site because it had good sun. The better the sun, the more cost-effective the energy is delivered because you can produce more. Within 200 miles or less of Los Angeles, we have one of the very finest solar resources on the planet. You know, we need to take the carbon out of the world's largest economy and do it in a very short time frame. I mean, large-scale solar in the best locations, like the desert, are going to be important parts of that. Ivanpah is one of seven new big solar plants in the state that will be finished by 2014. And solar energy from plants and rooftops will continue to grow. California utilities are rushing to fulfill a state law that requires them to produce one-third of their electricity from renewable energy by 2020. California was among the very first states to adopt a policy that required utilities to buy a certain percentage of their electricity from renewable energy sources. Now 34 states have adopted similar policies. Unlike the photovoltaic solar panels you find on rooftops and in some solar plants, Ivanpah uses a technology called concentrating solar thermal. Mirrors reflect sunlight and concentrate it onto boilers filled with water on top of three towers, each as tall as a 45-story building. The taller the towers, the more mirrors fit on the field. The boiler produces high-pressure steam that powers a turbine at the base of the tower. Just as at any traditional power plant, the turbine produces electricity. The project itself uh, will, on an annual basis, serve the equivalent of about 140,000 homes. One of the shortcomings of solar energy is that it's only available when the sun is shining. But systems in place at some solar plants similar to Ivanpah get around this by storing heat in molten salt for later use. When you add storage, you're essentially making this a power plant just like a natural gas plant, meaning it has the ability to be flexible, controllable, and deliver power when it's most valued and most needed onto the grid. Ivanpah doesn't include storage, but the first U.S. solar plant with storage started delivering electricity in 2013 in Arizona. Despite the advantages of these large solar plants in the desert, Ivanpah ran into challenges. From the get-go, we knew that the Ivanpah project was located in, in an area that had fairly high density of desert tortoise in it. Worried about habitat disruption, the Center for Biological Diversity out of Los Angeles testified against the project. But construction began in 2010. Desert tortoises are protected under the Endangered Species Act, so the project's developer, BrightSource, based in Oakland, California, asked for a permit to move any tortoises it found on the federal land where it was building the plant. The initial surveys did not show that there were a lot of desert tortoises. Surveys conducted during dry years led BrightSource to believe they'd find close to 30 tortoises. But the rains came and 173 tortoises showed up instead. We stopped construction in one area of the project. Um, what they did is have us take a pause in, in the area in which they had located the additional tortoises. The company transferred the tortoises to pens and later moved them back onto wild land. 53 additional tortoises have been born in captivity. If you take into account the care and monitoring of all the tortoises involved in the program, it works out to be about $55,000 per tortoise. I think early on it was a big rush to get projects on the ground. There hadn't been any planning. There hadn't been any large-scale evaluation of the landscape. 
In response, more research is taking place and new policies are being adopted. Biologists like Ken Newseer from the U.S. Geological Survey are trying to better understand how development might impact animals like desert tortoises. Each tortoise has its own channel and we plug that channel in. So that tortoise is up in this hillside somewhere. The U.S. Interior Department has identified solar energy zones on public land in six southwestern states. These 300,000 acres are close to transmission lines and have fewer threatened species. In California, government agencies and environmental groups are working to identify large tracts in the Mojave Desert suitable for wind and solar plants. This plan would also set aside land for desert species. We're engaged in that process and very much looking forward to help crafting a good plan that allows for renewable energy development as well as allowing for good, strong conservation to occur. So this one here is a new borough. We just put an address here so we can see not only how many times does he use this same exact place, but which other tortoises are using this place. I got a position, here we go, 665, 672. Around the country, developers, policymakers, and environmentalists are faced with the delicate task of balancing the need for clean energy with the need to protect well-loved landscapes. There's no such thing as an impact-free energy source. If we're gonna deal with climate change, we have to understand that. And if we can choose the locations for these facilities very carefully, we can avoid a lot of the biggest problems. 